lot of sprite variants running around. Uh, it's a solid deck. I can't blame the players for going to that strategy. I thought I'd be seeing more Cash Tira, but I mean, Cash Tira is the targeted deck to beat. Yep, everyone was looking to beat that deck this weekend. Lots of Cyphering Gear Gammas running around, all sorts of ways to counter it. Maybe that's the reason why we haven't seen as much Cash Tira as we anticipated. Yep. And I believe the game has begun. I'll draw for turn. We're passing turn on an empty field. Yeah, I was going to say, is he drawing for turn on his first turn? Nope, it looks like Matt not drawing anything. And normally a very consistent deck. It does play a lot of like cards that you might not be able to use on your first turn. Like maybe some of the one of trap cards, like maybe a Sprite Smashers, a Sprite Double Cross, maybe Triple Tactics Talent, just not being able to do anything. But Pat going to start his turn with Runic Dispelling, and he's going to use the effect to Special Summon Hugin. Hugin? Yep. yep. And then he's going to be able to discard a Sacred Tree from his hand at Runic Fountain. Yes, and not only that, the Sacred Tree is also going to activate, and the Sacred Tree is no, not once per turn. Tree. Yep. And you're going to be able to fetch another card out of the deck. Now, the it's graveyard effect, much more useful than its on field effect. <laughs> yes, but you know, even if you do set the card, you get to summon out the opposing type True. from the Naturia lineup. And he looks like he did add Naturia Blessing off of the Sacred Tree, and now he's going to follow it up with a normal summon of Naturia Camilla to send down Naturia Colt, Mole Cricket. Mole Cricket. He did, so Matt did have the infinite impermanence here on the Hugin, so Pack wasn't able to get uh, access to Runic Fountain right away. And we're going to activate the Mole Cricket, but we're also going to you know, pair it with the Camilla instead of attributing the card. We're going to send two cards from the top of the deck to the graveyard, and we're going to summon another Naturia Camilla. Yeah, we see really the synergy here between these two strategies. As you get to mill cards, instead of tributing, you're putting more Runic spells in your graveyard that you're going to be able to return with the Runic Fountain later on, while filling up your board with more monsters and tuners where you're going to be able to access mm. those awesome Synchro Monsters from your extra deck. Now, are we going to take that level 2 and the level 4? This is going to be a Synchro Summon, and that's what's so crazy about the deck cool. is that you can just climb up up with your synchro lines. Oh, Stardust Charge Warrior. I don't know if it's going to be Coral Dragon or Stardust Charge Warrior. Stardust Charge Warrior makes sense. I think, yeah, it definitely makes sense. You get the draw immediately. I mean, there's nothing on the other side of the <laughs> yeah. field right now, but we did activate a Runic card, so there's no not going to be a phase. battle phase here. So right now, it should be more focused. It's almost like we're playing turn one all over again. <laughs> oh, you pass? Well, okay, oh, it's okay. I won't, I won't uh, finish you this turn. Maybe there's a, a situation where Matt knows he's playing his Cherry Runic, so he passes turn one. He knows his battle phase is going to be safe more than likely, but... I still think if you have something to get going, you're going to get started. So we'll have to see what the rest of the cards in his hand are. We're going to synchro away the Mole Cricket plus the Camilla. That's another six. Let's see what he says to go. It looks like... Is that six? Oh, is it one? Sorry, that was a one. That was a one. Oh, so that one was a one. Now we, get a, now we get a, a Naturia Beast, one of the most powerful cards in the entire game, I would say. I love Naturia Beast. Anytime your opponent activates a spell card, you can send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard and negate it. Uh, to me, it feels a little bit like uh, Imperial Orders on the field right now, and the Mole Cricket's also on the field. And remember, Mole, Mole Cricket can summon itself out from the graveyard if you perform a Synchro Summon of a Naturia monster, or if your opponent also special summons out a monster, I believe, from the extra deck. Yep, and we know he has that Naturia Blessing set face down, so... We'll be looking to interact with Matt during his turn. This is going to be pretty rough because in the main phase, we are seeing Cricket right away. Are we trying to proceed to the battle phase uh, Maybe. right Maybe. I now? think he might have said trying to go to battle phase, so that's going to prompt Pack to use the Cricket to summon a Camilla to send down another Sacred Tree. I mean, if he's going to be forced to banish multiple cards off of the field right away, might as well get the uh, maximum value out of the uh, current stuff that was already established. Or find a way to go into, like, Naturia Barkeon or something to negate the evenly matched. That's going to be pretty difficult. I don't know. Oh, how yeah, I don't think he's able to do that. Yeah, he would have to have done that on his first turn to really think about the evenly matched, but going to keep the Naturia Beast not too bad. And it's also pretty, like, with the, uh, with the originally the set uh, Blessing, it, even if you cleared the Naturia Beast, you would have been able to just revive the card right away. So he uh, goes to main phase two, has an infinite impermanence uh, on Naturia Beast. And we're going to see an attempted yeah. negation uh, with Naturia Beast. Of course, it is negated by infinite impermanence, but I think Pack is going to try to load his graveyard. Maybe mm -hmm. he'll hit another uh, Sacred Tree. Yeah, Sacred Tree just getting more runic spells in his graveyard, so if he happens to draw a fountain and has a way uh, to put them back. Now, the battle phase has passed, so that... Uh, that beast probably is going to, if it's going to be removed from the field, it's going to be from uh, the new cards that we're going to see onto the field now. Because there's not going to be any more battling here. That is true. So the starter summoned blue. Blue's going to add maybe red or carrot. I saw that he has a jet already in his hand. Perhaps uh, the red can prevent some of the monster effect that maybe impacts hand from going off. 
Yeah, and we know he has the tree of blessing that he added off of the sacred tree. Yeah. Now it looks like Matt going to spell summon red from the hand to try to protect himself from any some of those monster effects that uh, Pat could have in the hand. We're going to see the jet jet special summon out. We're going to get into starter. Looking to summon Carrot during the next turn, I'd assume. But with the, he needs to get rid of this Nechiria Beast, but I think he'll be able to find a way. Awesome. You can just remove it off of the field. The Soul Sweeper or <laughs> Soul something? Sweeper? Soul Sweeper is an option. Okay, here's the Sprint. The, I think this is everyone's Sprite's favorite card, Sprint. All right, so it's going to use Mole Cricket from the graveyard. Oh, that's right. Mole Cricket's other. The extra deck summon, now it's coming in. And uh, Nechiria Beast, though... Being the highest attack, it's not going to allow that Mole Cricket to get the maximum value of two monsters. Not quite yet. We'll have to see if... And he also, uh, Matt has that red on the field now as well. So he's maybe just using the effect before um, Pat gets more or Matt gets more level twos onto the field to be able to just negate it for free. Yeah, that's true. But Matt not really falling for that bait there. Mm-hmm. But this does put another monster on board. If you do pass turn with the Mole Cricket, I mean, the Mole Cricket can just go off the next turn. Very true. And there's no battle phase. And that's the easiest monster to just destroy by battle. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's going to be overlaying for Gigantic Sprite here. He's able to use a Link Monster as a material. And now while he has that Link Monster as a material, it's going to double his attack to 3,200. Detaches the Beaver to Special Summon a level 2 from the deck. I wonder what he's going to go for. Most of the sprites have already uh, used cool. their effect. You can Swap probably frog. see... Swap Frog, perhaps, maybe, maybe you can go for a Carrot, just so the negation, if we need a spell negation. Are we seeing Swap Frog? Okay. I believe Swap Frog is activating. <laughs> yeah, we're going to send down probably the Tetsudo Irat Naman. Yes, Newman. we are. Newman. Now, there are two versions of this card, in a way. <laughs> They do the exact opposite thing. One, one's a turtle that will one day be strong. The other one's a turtle that was once strong. <laughs> <laughs> now, the way to summon the card back onto the field would be to use something like a double cross mm -hmm. onto an arrow. Could definitely do that. Look, seems like he's looking at Reproductus. So while you have Reproductus and a Swap Frog... On the field, yeah, he's going to go for it since that beaver oh, is underneath that zone. The reproductors can turn beaver yeah, into an yeah, aqua, good. and then you can overlay those two aqua monsters into it. Totally awesome. So, yeah, and maybe he already has double cross, but I'm surprised he didn't get... Yeah, oh, maybe it is. I see a trap card in his hand, so he probably does already have it, which is why he grabbed the starter. Mm -hmm. But losing the red off the field means you can't use the red to negate Naturia Beast to negate Semi? your okay. starter. Oh, yep. But we'll have to see how it's going to play out. The Totally Awesome is going to be able, during the semi phase, to attach to summon a Dupe Frog from the deck. Well, the, I haven't seen that strategy in a long yeah, time. It works really well when you do that double cross play with the Reproductus because you're able to summon back the Testudo or Rot Newman. Mm -hmm. And then the, normally one of the ways you can attack over it, maybe in Kashtira or something, you can activate Pressure Planet Rathos, summon like Scareclaw Kashtira or uh, a Rise, oh, yeah. a, a Kashtira Rise Heart. And since they're bigger because it feels well, you can just attack over it. But now Dupe Frog, you got to go through that Dupe Frog first. Mm hmm. Normal Summon Sunflower? Oh, we're going to see a Normal Summon Sunflower. That's uh, that's pretty good. I mean, that potentially just shuts off the... Totally awesome. But right now, there is no Camilla, and uh, Sunflower needs to tribute itself mm -hmm. and another monster at the same time to get the monster negation effect. But we're going to see the Naturia Blessing activated. I think we have a good point there. The Camilla with the Sunflower combination just is incredible. Yeah, and the card's actually not once printed, but it does tribute <laughs> itself off normally when you use it. Like, a lot of the old-school Naturia cards way back in, like, Hidden <laughs> Arsenal day, like, I didn't see too much of the competitive scene, but now... Rose Whip has kind of fallen in and out of play throughout the years. Mm -hmm. but, but we mainly see, like, the synchro <laughs> monsters, uh -huh. but nowadays we're seeing, like, hey, you know, the main deck monsters, they're really, really good. So and it does look like he did have that double cross. And we're not seeing a double totally awesome, but we're, I think we're seeing a take play. Oh, he could take the Naturia Beast here so he'll be able to activate his starter. This is pretty cool. Oh, you're Naturia Beast in the gate spells? Let me have it. But it's not going to be everything. We do have a monster effect negation. We could have potentially two monster effect negation right here. Yeah, the, the Toad can trade. He still has the starter set, but the starter is only going to be useful if maybe he has another copy of Red. So it'll be Red and Toad versus Sunflower. But the Camilla is going to be summoned and send down the Sacred Tree, so he's going to be able to have a Naturia card. 
I think the timing is going to be crucial here. Mm -hmm. If the red can come onto the field just quick enough, if, if <laughs> just in case you started the interaction before the red came onto the field, it will be perhaps a one interaction too late. And Peck hasn't been uh, hasn't had to use a runic spell just yet this turn, so he will have his battle phase online. Activate runic fountain. Oh, he's got the fountain. This could completely change the game if he manages to activate one runic spell. That's uh, drawing that's three cards like, can really put you back into it. It could be any game because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you draw three cards and then you get to do it again on your opponent's turn. So sunflower is not once per turn, and he. He does have double activation on that Sunflower, and there's enough stuff to let it happen. And even if Mole Cricket put to the graveyard, if you perform a Synchro Summon to another Naturian monster, boom, it's back on yep. the field. Okay. You'd say it just jumps back like a Cricket. Yep. <laughs> how, how fitting of the monster. <laughs> I'm not sure what a Mole Cricket is exactly. but <laughs> I tried to look it up. I believe it is... It is an insect okay. that has claw, like, a like claws, like claws like a molded like dig. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would not recommend looking it up. <laughs> it's definitely not as cute as the one. I on love, the I love my Naturio <laughs> ones. Yeah, all the Naturio cards are just like these cute plants, but they're deceptively powerful. All right, thinking about what he can do here with the right. extra deck. So you could definitely negate both the Toad and oh, the Naturia Beast <laughs> right now, based on what I see. It looks like he just activated that Runic Fountain to try and get Matt to use Naturia Beast so he could clear some of these things off the field, but Matt did not fall for the bait. Now, one of the more dangerous phases for Naturia is the battle phase. Is it? It is uh, one of the most... Because a lot of these cards are pretty vulnerable. They're not very strong. Mm. And a lot of interaction usually happens during the main phase. If you're able to push through into the battle phase oh, without two. the last one... And won the last one. And won the last one. That's right. So he didn't bounce back there, but... Oh, yeah, because I remember he won the first two games and was excited. I thought maybe he thought he won completely. But now Pack starting off with a runic spell to summon Hugin... Runic spell plus Sacred Tree, strong combo. And we're seeing the impermanence drop this once is, again. Is this the repeat? We, is it VOD? Did we start it over from the beginning? <laughs> nope. Looks like it's just going to be a very similar. At least he's going to be able to add off the Sacred Tree here. The impermanence on Hugin's always big. You do not want to let Runic players access Fountain if you can stop it by any means. I almost feel like almost playing that impermanence just stopped three-card draw. <laughs> it really did. We'll see to see if he's going to be able to get this uh, Hugin okay. off the field. Hugin, I don't think, is once per turn, so I think you can summon another one. Yes, and yes do you it can. Again. And even the Runic Fountain is is technically like a once per turn, but is by once copy. by copy. That's right. Yep, so you're able to play another Runic Fountain and then use the effect again. That is for sure. Well, we're going to see the Blessing. Blessing is going to special summon the Mole Cricket from the hand. Send to, oh, and Nibiru sent to the graveyard as well as, uh, I believe that was another Camilla. I think so. And we got a second Camilla. Well, we do have the tuners. We have the right monsters. We're going to start seeing some synchro plays. Going for now, we're seeing the now it's Coral Dragon. Coral Dragon. So Coral Dragon for when you go first, and then Charge Warrior for when you're going second, I guess. But the, the whole point is, I guess Coral Dragon is the level six tuner, and Charge Warrior is not a tuner. So you're going to be able to use it to synchro with the I think it's Frecky, right? Mm -hmm. And then make um, a Baron de Fleur. And you get to draw the card from the Coral Dragon. Yes. So we're going to see Baron de Fleur, and we're also going to see... Oh, sorry, it's Gary, I think. Yep. The Gary. Yeah, it's Gary, 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 Gary. Gary, Gary. And we can see the Mulkrick uh, and summon back. This is, this is a pretty standard opening here for uh, Naturia Runic. It doesn't have the fountain face up, but having the Baron and Naturia Beast always really strong. And now he knows his opponent's already using infinite impermanence out of the hand. Probably doesn't have three copies for the Baron and the Naturia Beast. We're going to see the opening play with the Nimble Beaver being normal summoned on the field. Well, this is an interesting line to see. Is he baiting out the Baron? I think you have to Baron. I don't know what his face down is, but I don't think it's bad it's to Baron. Normal. He did get evenly matched, but yeah, it feels too good to Baron. This. It's a normal summon. Right. Like normal summon commitment. You <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> good <laughs> call. To another way to get Fountain and another Runic spell to keep that money moving. Keep yep. drawing more cards. All right, I see a Draco back and an Impermanence here for Matt. Definitely not two cards he wants to see in the opening hand, but there's also an yeah, Angler and a Jet, I believe, so he's going to have some plays. Gonna normal summon jet. Ooh. 
Special summon blue. Blue effect. I mean, blue is probably the better one to summon out after the fact. Because you could, you could get into another copy of Jet. Jet can grab you the spell card. Yep, you can always get another Jet. I think that's exactly what ha what's happening here. Or... I can see an overlay. Maybe goes into Gigantic, playing around something like Nibiru. Yeah, immediately locking out the additional levels or any of those other monsters is a really good play. A lot of people tend to just maybe jump the gun and go into Sprint and maybe summon two more, but that opens the Nibiru line. Yep, this definitely is the way to play. He, he did see the Nibiru in game two when uh, Pack was milling, so he definitely knows it's on the menu for Pack for sure. And uh, we sent away the Dupe Frog. Uh, maybe sided out yep. the uh, Testudo? I think so. That's what I would think. Oh, but so he gets to return the Swap Frog to his hand. So now he can ditch the Angler from the hand. That's going to trigger Angler's effect to summon two Nimble Beavers from the deck to the field. Maybe we won't even see the Sprint now. Yep. Three in hand? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is interesting. I wonder... Yeah, he could still, if he can get another level 2 on the field. Oh, no, he just has to link away the Sprite, mm -hmm. the Gigantic, and uh, Nimble Beaver. And then go into Reproductus, and he can at least have Toad. Good. Oh, but he does. He hasn't summoned the Jet yet, so that's going to grab him double cross. So he looks like he's going for double Toad as opposed to the Tetsudo, Irad, Numa, Newman. Newman, yes. Newman. Newman? <laughs> <laughs> if we get to the double cross, I, I, well, that's... I think that's uh, one of the top considerations now. We see it put on the table. Yep, double cross. Let's you summon um, a monster from your graveyard to a link monster, to a zone your link monster points to, or take control of an opponent's monster, link monster points to, or you just take one of your opponent's monsters and throw it under your gigantic sprite. It feels like it's too flexible <laughs> sometimes. It's a good one. So I guess he could go into, oh, he, but he's going to want a sprint to, to, oh, no. Yeah, nope. he's going to need a link monster to use the reborn effect if he wants to go into double toad. Could be, Oh, no, the I, reaper duckus will be the link uh, he can yeah. summon to the zone points to. Yeah, and reaper then still make the it. toad, and then, yeah, that's yep. still available. So. Just have, all you have to do is make sure the toad doesn't end up in the zone underneath the reaper duckus. Mm -hmm. So the safest three zones would be one, three, and five. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Now, Matt seems like he just wants to prevent the game set from advancing too far yep. and just going for the double toad. I mean, if you go card for card trade, it could end up really well. And there's a three Jeez. card set. There is an imperm in there from what we saw earlier. And there's a double cross. There's a lot One, of interruptions yeah, here. Mystery, yeah. uh, double cross imperm is pretty strong, especially when you have the toad. Anything? Stand by. No. Nope, he just sent the dupe frog with swap frog. I wonder. Maybe he didn't realize he was going to do this play. He could have kept the Dupe Frog in his deck and summoned it here off the toe. Yes. Dark Ruler no more. That's the best card against Sprite. Now, that doesn't the double like, cross will help, though. Yes, because the, uh, the uh, what we saw from a previous game, uh, the Totally Awesome can just activate, send itself to the graveyard for the cost, and then add back a card, and then it can just double cross back onto the field, and now it's live again. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about Totally Awesome in the Sprite deck is you're able to add something back like Nimble Beaver, so you're going to have some follow-up for the next turn. We're going to see the Dispel. Uh, is that Dispelling? Uh, yep, Dispelling, Summoning Hugan, Discarding Sacred Tree. That's, that, it always feels so good when you get to discard the Sacred Tree. Yeah, I'm, I wonder if this is going to prompt him to use the Toad. No, he's going to go for the Empire. Yeah, once this, again. This three times in a row, right? Yeah, <laughs> history repeats itself. <laughs> history repeats itself. My, I had a friend from my uh, OTS that when Ryza, uh, Ryza, just the first one came out, mm -hmm. he used to always say, he would true for Ryza and be like, history well, repeats really itself, putting the cards back <laughs> on top of the deck. So when he said that, it instantly triggered, unlocked a memory for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Matt knows about that play, though, of using the Toad to get it off the field to double cross. He might just decide to use the double cross to spot remove a monster. But I mean, with you the still have the effect. negation, right? I mean, you can wait till. Yeah. Well, you don't really have the negation, but maybe there's something else that's better, like you said. Yeah, I figured just, I mean, yeah, the only thing would be using double cross not to bring back Toad. But, like, I feel like that would have been good to use here. Like, just maybe to, it's fatigue? Yeah, maybe. I mean, playing many, many rounds of 
a tournament, I can understand like, oh, playing locals, maybe you just only need to be the four rounds, but now, now you're pushing it. Uh, but yeah, I also realized, yeah, since uh, Pack used the, the Runic spells, not having the battle phase, he could also be anticipating that his Toad Awesome might just survive the turn. Oh. So if he can use the double cross as a defensive option, keep the Toad, and start with like a Toad and Gigantic Sprite, because oh, Pack's be going to really have to good. pick between one of these two to get rid of the field, and I feel like if you know he has double cross, you can't go after this Totally Awesome. Like oh, but he went into Barkeon before he can use the double cross. That is really good. A I did not expect that. I don't think Matt did either. This is why I was That's tempted just to throw the toad away and then bring it back immediately just so you'd have some form of negate. Oh no, now he's just uh, shut down. I love Natria Barkeon. Natria Barkeon is an old one, so if you're not familiar with it, it lets you banish two cards from your graveyard to negate a trap activation. And that is also not once per turn. A lot of these Natria monsters from the extra deck Aren't once per turn. That's why it's, that's how why they can be really oppressive. And we still have tuner monsters on the field. I wonder if we are gonna be able to see a runic fountain come out and maybe play a single card out. Oh, well, I think uh, we're trying for it. We're trying for it with uh, Stardust Charge Warrior. Gonna draw a card here. Make sure it's shuffled. There's no battle phase, so this is going to be maybe a bit difficult if he doesn't have the correct spells. And we're going to see another. This, this was the, the first blessing. That's going to bring back Camilla so he can synchro with the Stardust Charge Warrior. We're seeing a 10. That's Baron. So Baron's going to be able to either take out this Toad or Gigantic Sprite. I mean, that does provide another layer of negation, also. If it gets destroyed now, that's going to be a... <laughs> if the token gets destroyed now, it's going to be uh, one way to clear it. And it's Freezing Chains, I think. It's either Flashing Fire or Freezing Chains, but I think it's Freezing Chains. Yeah, I, I believe it is the Freezing Curse. Or Freezing Curse. Freezing Curse for to summon, and we're seeing a Runic Fountain. You know, Dark Ruler No More doesn't really matter too much, where you can't even deal battle damage anyway, right? When you don't have a battle phase. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> that drawback is completely nullified, pretty much. And the Fountain, okay. Will he resolve Runic Fountain? Is the card enough? Okay, we're seeing a donor and for hire. This is the for hire monster. Donor for hire is definitely a good one. He's going to be able to. So this is the way he's going to take out both the monsters. He's going to take out the gigantic and the totally awesome now because he can. Yeah. Uh, activate the summon. Okay. And oh, there it is. Fountain, now he's gonna. Does he finally get to draw three? I I think he got there. <laughs> this is not looking good for Matt. Zero cards in hand. Baron still hasn't used its effect to destroy yet. And uh, the back row. We know it's stunned out. Yeah, it's <laughs> it is rough. Rough for Matt. Uh, There's one unknown. One unknown, oh, and then rock. the sprite double cross. Now the Toad can add back uh, Nimble Beaver unless he decides to negate this with Baron. Sure, but if you. I mean, I, mean I, I think there's merit. He's like, what? You're going to negate the normal summon effect anyway, right? So yeah. you might as well just negate with Baron here. And if, you, if it's only trap card negation that you need to, I believe the Bar King can handle both of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Enter battle, skip, end phase, union effect, gain 1,000 life points. Yeah. Gain 1,000 life points. Uh, during the end phase, that effect is mandatory, I believe. Yep. This is going to be a pretty tough way to play. Yep. Draw phase. We have a fountain live. There could be more disruption in the hand now in the form of quick play spells. And you could potentially even have the most flexible card like Runic Tip. Runic Tip is a strong one. How much time is up, George? Thank you. Now that is, I believe, Moonin. Uh, it, it prevents targeting. Yeah, Moonin's an interesting one. It's a, it, I've seen it more come out in Master than I have in the TCG, but... I believe if, if a card that activates targets, you'll be, you'll be able to banish it to negate the activation of that card. Ooh. Well, and I believe it will also destroy, too. Oh, the other back was probably a Draco back. Because I remember seeing the Draco oh, back the in Draco his opening hand, I think oh, so. But no, he does have it right now. And oh, we're going to see the negation of the right from the Baron. So now he can summon the Nimble Beaver. Uh, allowing this beaver to go through, I wonder what Pack has in his hand to kind of ha handle the rest of the follow-up here. 
Gracie, a nimble angler summoned out from the nimble beaver. Yeah, he might just be waiting to do something until the gigantic right. It looks like he doesn't have any face down spell trap, but while that runic fountain is facing on the field, Pat can activate runic quick place from the hand. So he definitely has a lot of things he can potentially do. I think the number of moves Matt has right now is really based on what he can summon from the extra deck to really push through. But there is also the uh, Ripper Doc is still on the field. Don't forget he, about that card. hanging out, right? Yeah, this is he's just ready to change someone's Tiber attribute. Like, well, he's going to link away with the uh, Reaper Duckus to go into Sprint. Interesting. I figured maybe go overlay for a Gigantic or something, but Sprint. Sprint it is. Killing two more cricket. Mole Cricket, don't forget about that. The Graveyard, and that could lead into Sunflower. But before the Sunflower comes up, I guess it's a bit harder here because the Sprite cards, they're not exactly very strong in terms of the attack points. So mm -hmm. getting the double <laughs> is a bit harder, but maybe we'll see into a Camilla, perhaps. It is going to be a Camilla. Yep. And that's going to let him send an Aturia card from his deck to the Graveyard. And if you summon cards um, while Camilla is on the field, uh, Camilla gets a special summon Shilling monsters one. from the graveyard. Camilla to reborn, shilling two, Camilla to send. Okay, so it's going to trigger when the beaver is summoned, and so he's going to send and special. Send Sacred Tree. Sacred Tree lets him add an Atria card from the deck to the hand. It's going to bring back the Sunflower. Uh, new mandatory, Sacred Tree. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. There's a lot of negation on the field now, all and, of a sudden. And, and that runic fountain still face up on the field. And that was just all the stuff from the graveyard. So forcing Matt into just using the extra deck was a really good play. Yeah, I assume he's looking for maybe like a Zeus line of some sort. But it's <laughs> it's going to be tough to navigate through all, every, all of Pac's defenses. And we, does Pac have a battle phase here? I believe he does. No, he definitely, oh, the next battle phase? Uh, yeah, I, I think he went to the battle phase at the end of his last turn. Yes, yeah, 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 that was the, la the final action he had, yeah. I mean, sorry, for the next turn. For the next turn. For the next yeah, turn. The next turn. He hasn't activated a runic spell this turn, so yes, he's probably yes, trying to hold off on it so he can finish the game next turn if he can. Well, there goes the battle phase, but... Slumber is going to banish the top one, two, three cards off the top of the deck. Control and lock, but we did hit Water Enchantress. Uh, yeah. So he's going to go to battle phase, yeah. trying to attack over the Sunflower Sprint. Uh, oh, there it is, the runic tip. That's it. That's going to be it.